Um, welcome everyone. Um, this is one of uh, one more meeting, one one more OAuth interim meeting. So, um, as a reminder, uh, the not well applies here. And uh, today we will be talking about um, uh, Vittorio will uh, will entertain us with the identity use cases in browser catalog. Uh, as a reminder, we still have two more meetings um, next week and the week after that. So. Uh, that's all I have. Um, any comments, questions about this? Okay, I will stop sharing and then I will give it to Vittorio. Merci. Let's see if sharing works. Oh, God. Hey, voila. Can you see my amazing screen? Yep, I can see your screen. Uh, do you see George? Is George on? Uh, he's on the phone. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm here. Wonderful, thank you. I uh, suddenly felt uh, uh, alone and scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome everyone to this uh, update on uh, this uh, initiative of uh, browser changes and identity. And here we just wanted to give you an update of what we have done or what we have not done in the last uh, six months or so. And so I'm just going to give you a quick recap of what we are doing. I'm gonna give you a um, update of what we have done in terms of documents. And then uh, I'll give you a bit of an outlook of what's being planned in this area, not necessarily within ITF, but in general, like uh, the entire uh, archipelago of the things that are happening in this space. And then I'll just uh, throw a couple of uh, controversial points so we can have uh, a classic uh, animated discussion. <laughs> Very good. So last idea, uh, we had this discussion just sort of informing the group of what was going on. And the idea is uh, browsers aren't happy that advertisers track users across the board, or at least that's what they maintain publicly. And so they are taking steps for preventing some of the most egregious uh, scenarios of tracking for occurring. And uh, the idea is also that uh, they understand that uh, um, identity is a roadkill in that context. And so um, they are trying to introduce new primitives that will somewhat obviate for the need for us to use lower level primitives. And here, pay attention because this is subtle. Uh, last time we said, well, as soon as they will be done to their satisfaction to these uh, alternative primitives, they will kill the lower level primitives. As it turns out, they're going to kill the lower level primitives no matter what, whether they are satisfied with the next uh, uh, set of APIs or otherwise. So that injects a kind of like a new urgency and a, a spring in our step as we try to deal with this. And last time, the conclusion of uh, this entire thing was, uh, okay, best thing we can do is let's uh, document, let's preserve the scenarios that uh, identity has uh, in the context of the browser, and uh, let's put those in a format so that uh, we can use those scenarios as a trade, as a concrete anchors in the discussion with the browser people so that they understand the true impact and uh, down to the technical details of the changes that we are envisioning. And that's what we set ourselves up to do. And so after a super long time trying to figure out uh, uh, RFCs in a markdown format, official thanks to Daniel and uh, Brian and Thorsten for their help on that. We'd have never been able to do anything without them helping. We have uh, a document. And basically, you can find this document in the values uh, um, in the repo in there. And the idea is pretty simple. We just created this uh, high level framework that uh, and we just posted it uh, as a draft because that's what we do in IDF, IDF, ITF Marizion. In the morning, my English co processor is uh, rusty. Uh, that's what we do in this working group, but the actual work is occurring on uh, GitHub. And in GitHub, we have this description of uh, how to contribute uh, um, um, 
scenarios, we have a scenario template, which is designed to tease out the most relevant factoids about scenarios in the context of uh, working with browser people and uh, the plans they have and similar. And uh, um, we have uh, a list uh, of uh, issues which represent uh, scenarios that we identified. Initially, we just thought here is a framework and people will propose scenarios, but that did not happen. And so we put together a list of obvious candidates and then uh, um, we started uh, assigning those in a manner that I will describe in a second. And so we did this and we placed it on the list, but uh, we heard uh, crickets. No one uh, um, really proposed any scenario, despite the poking in various contexts. Now, at the same time, our brethren at the Open ID Connect Foundation started an interest group which had a similar goals to the initiative we're doing here, and in particular on how to keep the dialogue open with uh, browser vendors and similar. And that team, that uh, effort is led by Tim Capali, who I believe is also on the line. And uh, there we, um, we did do some progress. That's to say that uh, uh, we poked people and uh, um, we now have some people who got assigned scenarios and uh, wrote some of them. Also, I have to be fair, someone did uh, answer the call, and in particular, Heather helped with SAML community, and we have a couple of SAML scenarios in the list as well. Um, okay, so this assignment didn't occur at random, but we prioritized those scenarios in the order in which we uh, expect them to go the way of a dodo. And in particular, anything that relies on third party cookies, such as uh, various flavors of logout, uh, uh, refresh without uh, uh, refresh tokens and similar, are the ones that are now being worked on because uh, we expect the bugs to perish first. And so that's what is urgent. We actually find uh, a compromise with, with uh, the browser people. Okay. Now, so what are we doing? We keep trying to get uh, people to write those scenarios. I occasionally also poke a back channel, but again, I, every time I fail my charisma check because uh, people don't seem to be jumping on the opportunity. And we have uh, various uh, channels open with uh, browser vendors. And when I say various, I mean one, which is <laughs> Sam Goto from uh, the Chrome team who's been wonderfully open to discuss things with us. And in fact, I know many in this group also have uh, one-on-ones with him. And then uh, we have uh, um, various other forums where we participate, like there is uh, the privacy uh, working group of W3C in Slack. And there we'll occasionally have some interactions with browser people. In general, people haven't been as uh, open and proactive as Sam. And in fact, uh, like if you guys have ever worked with uh, Apple, you know what uh, awaits us. So other really nice, uh, clear uh, points of contact we'll have are at the end of this month, the OpenID Foundation is having a, its a semi-annual uh, workshop. Semi, uh, or I don't know. But anyway, uh, there will be a short update on, uh, the, on the matter. And at least uh, there will be a, a number of people gathered that are interested in the topic. I don't know how much progress we'll be able to make in like 15 minutes, but still. And the other is instead uh, way more beefy. Uh, Heather is organizing a summit, uh, which is going to take uh, two mornings at the end of May. And uh, uh, she's inviting uh, standard providers and uh, um, identity people, and so uh, she's on the, on the call if she wants to give more details, but I think that that is going to be probably our best bet to actually uh, put at least the problems on the table and have uh, the relevant people acknowledge them. Now, we are almost done. Yeah, I know, summit sounds uh, interesting. Okay, so before we open to discussion, let me seed you are uh, with some key points, and then I'll shut up. Um, so one thing that we 
we suspected, but it became very clear in the work in the last few months, was that uh, um, from the browser perspective, sure, they would like to preserve identity, what they call the duration, but uh, for them, the highest order bit is privacy. So if uh, for the sake of privacy, uh, the identity experience has to suffer, well, uh, that's the way, way it's gonna be. So that's uh, an important element whenever you negotiate on that side. Like it's, uh, it's gonna cause, like it caused already some hard work and I think it will keep doing so. And the other thing is that we say browser people, but in fact, they are not under a single banner. They are multiple different initiatives and it doesn't appear that there is a unifying uh, approach. Apart from, we've got to do this privacy thing, every browser has a different approach and it, there isn't an obvious uh, initiative that they are all subscribing to. So even if we are successful, here we might need to be successful with multiple interlocutors. Like there is no unified front on their side. And that's gonna be a problem because uh, I envision a comeback of the 2000s in which uh, websites say, uh, this website needs uh, Internet Explorer 5.5 because it will not work with 5, or it needs Firefox or stuff like that, which of course I know we are not keen on getting back to. The other thing is that, uh, again, we try in multiple channels and uh, it's just hard to get a single, uh, uh, like a, in general, it looks like uh, the browser people are very busy with something else, which is like dealing with uh, ads and similar, which probably move way more money than we do, at least on the surface, and get way more press than we do. So um, it's just very hard to make those uh, connections. And also in terms of initiatives, there is, like I'd say that uh, OpenID Connect and ITF collaborated pretty well, let's say that uh, team uh, was uh, always very open in uh, leveraging the work already done in here and using this framework and similar. But apart from these, uh, everything else has been a bit uh, random. And then the final thing is, uh, one thing that was clear is that uh, um, our best engagement so far with uh, Sam uh, somehow uh, suffered from the fact that we conflated the two different timelines. On one side, there is the forward-looking timeline, which is like a research-like, R&D-like, of a web ID and new high-level primitives and similar, which is brand new, is like a longer term, and it deserves some time to get it right. On the other, there is the imminence of uh, the demise of the third-party cookies, and as soon as those are gone, who knows what else? Is it gonna be decorated links? Is it gonna be redirects? Who knows? And the point is that uh, our customers are going to be imminently broken, just like what happened with ITP. That's going to happen here as well. So um, we, in the recent interactions, raised the need to at, at least try to have uh, two speeds in our engagement. One is uh, helping to design the next generation of uh, high-level primitives dedicated to identity in the browser. The other is uh, containing the damage and making sure that uh, once third-party cookies disappear, people that are still stuck with uh, old style SAML um, don't end up being out of business because uh, we have no solution for that. Oh, wow, that was um, a one long single breath. So um, let me shut up and give uh, George the chance to get some word in if he wants to. Uh, sure. No, you did a great job, Vittorio, um, categorizing sort of the state of, of things. Um, I think, uh, yeah, what became especially clear in the last couple of weeks is, um, the, the third party, uh, cookie issue and our need to determine what all breaks today when third party cookies are completely gone. Um, Cause that, that, that's, it's, it's, it, there is no decision. There is no, you know, yeah, sure. Maybe the right set of companies could call Google and get them to delay a couple of months or whatever, but this is a non-negotiable thing. It is happening. And um, there, may, there may be willingness on the browser to do some things that we haven't ever had the browsers willing to do. So I will give you my, 
favorite one at the moment, which is logout, because federated, you know, logout from an open ID connect perspective is completely broken in Safari. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, if the browsers are willing, let's say, to allow the IDP to provide the browser a set of, you know, URLs to go poke, right, to let those relying parties know that the user logged out and the browsers will intermediate that for us and send credentials where they wouldn't with normally because they know it's a, it's a classified identity flow. Well, then, you know, maybe that's a solution, but it is in this, it's, um, you know, in the space, but it's unclear, um, you know, what kinds of uh, opportunities or, or suggestions they're willing to, to consider. Okay, we have the we have the Dick in in the queue. Um, go ahead, Dick. Yeah, to follow on from what George is saying, I think we should, and I made this comment the last time we all talked about this. We should look at this as an opportunity for giving feedback to the browsers on what would be some great features. Now that we've got them potentially paying attention to what we're doing, we could look at. What are some things that would be really useful to the uh, protocols and federated identity? My, myself, the one that I'd like to see would be a uh, discovery mechanism so that the web page can say, hey, that what providers does this user have in a privacy protecting way, which I think is potentially going to have to happen if the flow is that the user needs to decide that something is a provider they're going to work with, which means that then the browser knows what are providers the user says they have versus not. Yeah, it, Tim. Yeah, uh, Dick, and, that, and that's that's a super important point. And I think, um, you know, something we had talked about early on in this process was like, what do we envision identity on the web looking like in 2022? Kind of removing things like web ID and, and having a more you know, higher level conversation. And we did start talking about, you know, what we have all these conversations around requesting a dig and, and wallet discovery and all of even web off end to an extent that all involved getting prompting the user for a credential or taking some action, which are, are just going to be if web ID were to be implemented as it is today, which I, you know, I don't think we are expecting that, um, you know, the users can have like seven different prompts from all different places, some from the browser, some from the operating system, you know, some from their wallet. And, you know, it's just that this is, I agree with you, this is a prime time to look at what we want because existing experiences like redirecting to an IDP just to do web auth then, why, why even redirect to the IDP anymore if the browser's in the middle, right? So I think there's, there is some, this, I agree with this is the time, but I think, you know, the challenging part has been uh, some, these browser vendors have very specific priorities for themselves. And from what we've kind of heard, they're not really interested in the big picture if it doesn't align with their goals. So that's been a really, it's been disheartening to me because uh, I do agree that this is the time to really paint the picture for the next 10 years. Um, so it just, yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, I do want to keep the conversations going if we can. And just to make a quick comment on that, I agree that these would be really nice. Um, I'm a bit concerned about uh, um, priorities. Let's say that uh, having the chance to have browsers expose the things we need to do a better experience would be really nice, but uh, um, I'm more concerned about uh, all the code out there, which cannot be changed and that it's going to be irremediably broken. Like, uh, think of, uh, all the site minder uh, deployments, which do some of like a distributed sign out or, uh, any other function that they need, uh, and, uh, have this stuff broken and it's already difficult to, to get, uh, the browser vendors to discuss practical uh, solutions to these. Like, for example, from an interstitial dialogue that says, hey, these, uh, well, this domain is trying to do something with this other domain. Are you okay with it? So that at least there is a, a, a route for not breaking the scenario. And to me, those things are more 
urgent than uh, uh, shaping the future, mostly because uh, um, a lot of the people that are leveraging those things, they have no idea that they have like this ticking bomb under their stuff. And if you tell them, uh, here there is a much better primitive uh, array platform, they will not have a platform. So we are just going to cause, not we, but like uh, those browser changes are going to cause a lot of pain. And to me, that just makes, uh, sets the priorities. Like uh, I would like to save the word that pain and then paint a more futuristic feature as well. But right now we are not even managing to uh, do the bleeding control in the right way so far. Okay, and George? Yeah, I, a lot of uh, similar things to what Vittorio says. I think we, if we, I agree, it would be awesome if the browsers want to listen, right? But I think that anything that we do at that level is effectively a new protocol, right? Which isn't necessarily bad, right? But it isn't likely SAML or OpenID Connect, which brings us back to the, you know, I just want to sort of echo what Vittorio was saying, that we have huge amounts of deployments out there and we can't be looking at just, you know, what it would be nice in the future for, for greenfield implementations, but we have to be looking at how can we work with the browsers to ensure that what's deployed today and is running the majority of the web, right, doesn't just fall over. Um, and and so we need we need solutions, and that may come in a couple of flavors, right? It could be the browsers are willing to say, okay, we will do X and allow the existing behavior to continue for three years, right? While you know, but then you know, but at that point in the future, we'll go ahead and and stop that, and then you have that three year buffer to basically go get all of the web infrastructure, you know, updated to whatever the new thing is. Um, uh, so, but today, right, I mean, I mean, fundamentally today, if you use, you know, SAML distributed logout or OpenID Connect front channel logout and your user shows up in Safari and, you know, you're the relying party and you have them log in with Google, it is impossible for Google to get them logged out of your RP because they can't use what's defined in the spec right, which is open an iframe or a, you know, pixel URL or anything of that nature. And redirect chains are going to break, right? There is nothing in the spec that says when the IDP redirects to you, the RP, and you log the user out, send the user back to the IDP. And no RP is going to want to do that anyway, right? I've got the user back. Why would I give them back to the RP so they can send them to my competitor, right? So it's just fundamentally broken. And so today, in reality, users can't log out if they're using Safari. So, yeah, you can sort of see the, the dangers there. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dick. So I appreciate that, you know, they're, they're making changes that are gonna break and they're gonna break some things because, well, right now it looks like we're saying, here's how the world works today, but we're not putting forward any you know, and I, or perhaps I haven't seen it, but the document we have is here's just how things work today. We're not proposing solutions or anything. And my commentary is like, why don't we propose solutions that address their problem and that uh, mitigate the downsides to existing things, but at the same time can go and enhance the existing experiences. You know, that, for example, you can do a discovery on what IDPs are available, which is completely independent of, you know, whether something's using SAML or OpenID, and you could still be using that protocol, however it works in the new world. But I sure, think it's going to be a big challenge because browsers are looking at getting rid of decorated links, and, you know, that's going to be a shift. And, you know, it, when you look at um, how the world's had to change, you know, Apple started blocking, you know, certain types of flows of OAuth and OpenID Connect in the past, and all of those app developers had to upgrade their apps to go and support the new thing. Much harder to do on the web, but, you know, the precedent's there that people say, okay, well, move to the new thing, you're broken. Um, just uh, to, uh, to give a quick answer to this, I I'll give you the same answer that we gave at the last ITF uh, during this topic, which is, uh, some of the browser goals are goals that uh, uh, might not be achievable. 
like uh, for example, like a, a proposal that would satisfy them would have to satisfy things like uh, the browser is uh, always in full control of what information is being uh, exchanged from the IDP to the RP and uh, knows the meaning of every attributes and has the chance to ex examine the artifacts and potentially do arbitrage and like blocking flows and similar. So whenever we discuss things like uh, there are flows in which the browser knows nothing, and so it's impossible for you to guarantee the things that you want to guarantee in terms of privacy, it just does, the message doesn't come across. So uh, I think that they're creating a, in, um, creating a proposal that today would work with them on these particular problems. Like the thing that you're saying about discovery, it is very interesting, but uh, uh, it doesn't go at the heart of the thing that they want to solve, which is uh, complete uh, privacy guarantees which we believe is going to be physically impossible. So uh, it's very hard for us to create a proposal that aligns with uh, those, those um, expectations. And that's why we fell back on let's document what we have because it's like objective reality. And so there is less of a uh, opinion component to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think their proposal, you know, I've had a number of chats with Sam and have reiterated to him a number of times that the browser totally mediating the experience is a non-starter because the browser just isn't going to know enough stuff. And then what happens when I'm using a different browser on a different computer? You know, where where is the source of truth from all my information? You know, so I think we need to sort of differentiate between things where, you know, they view the browser as the center of the world versus some of the things that they clearly are trying to solve that the, the we want to go and protect all the privacy is is the dream they have, but there's things that they really do own, which is like how do you stop a you know the correlations through decorated links, and I you know, I think the removal of decorated link is going to be the thing that really impacts the protocol. Uh, okay, uh, Tim. Uh, yeah, I mean one direct response to something you just said, Dick. I think. I think an even bigger concern is what if I use another browser on the same device, right? <laughs> it's not even across devices. We're starting to run into that with Fido, right? You can't even access the same platform credentials. So um, I, I do agree, like, these are, they don't necessarily have to be, I don't think having this conversation needs to sideline the, the make existing stuff keep working conversation. Um, I just think how we, how we present it is important because Google specifically will say they just don't have the resources to talk about that right now because they're talking about not breaking things. Uh, so I think if there are people who are involved that aren't necessarily involved in the the work that's happening now and don't plan to be, maybe we can kind of have a parallel conversation because I do think the more we wait, um, we're we're just going to shoot ourselves in the foot. Because um, I I don't you know we took a we took a very high level look at this internally at Microsoft and you know out of we don't necessarily believe that there's a need for new protocols, potentially things like CredMan. And there's a lot of things out there that aren't being fully utilized today um, to solve things like the NASCAR problem as one. So um, I, I think it's I think it's worth having a parallel conversation as long as we don't take our eyes off of the main priority personally. So. Uh, George? Yeah, so specifically in the sense of making proposals, if you look through comments on issues, I've made some. Um, in a couple of different ways uh, that pretty much get ignored. Um, that's not to say that we couldn't have more uh, weight if you know it was a, a proposal, but th the mechanism in the sense of proposals for browsers largely is you know write an explainer for the privacy CG group or write an explainer for the you know, web incubator community group on, you know within the web ID environment or. or or log an issue saying, here's my proposal for how to make it better. And that's, it, today, that's the best mechanism we have for communicating these things. The, 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 it, what, but, and, and Tim, um, I'll invite you to give your perspective, but in the last privacy community group, right, it was pretty clear that w even within an enterprise where you may have multiple domains and you want seamless SSO to work, right, where I go to one site and it redirects me to the IDP site and then it redirects me back, um, you know, fill in your favorite cloud, you know, enterprise IDP, right? That 
um, that that the browsers did not want to enable that seamless SSO. They wanted the user to explicitly give a consent for every non IDP domain that they, at least I think that's the way it works. Someone else can correct me if I'm wrong on the way storage access API works in, in if it's RP specific, you know, RP IDP specific or just IDP, but effectively the user has to give a specific consent that they want to allow the sort of the IDP to access certain data, um, right? And and that's there because they want to ensure that you can't, you know, do these redirect things, but the ad companies can't do the redirects. Um, you know, a, where I bounce a redirect to one thing and it immediately bounces me back and the user doesn't understand, but, you know, I've been tracked, right? So there's an explicit user consent event that happens in that context, right? And it was very clear that we will require the explicit user consent regardless of what it means to the user experience. Can I, and can I just add a comment? Yeah, yeah go ahead, uh, Tim. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I think I think the fear right now, right? So that is, I, I think we we caught we caught someone in a bit of a transitive uh, conundrum, I, I guess I could call it, in that uh, they they want to maintain SSO, but they are against you know the experience that tracking uh, that SS the tracking experience that SSO gives. So it, it was essentially a weird way to say yes we want both you know we don't want tracking but we want sso but transitively they you know it ends up being the same thing to them um so they're not able to answer that question well and the default response is use storage access api and as i think we've seen with other things that are happening on the platform side there is very little control over what that message says and it is very misleading to the user so the user simply signing in is going to have all this privacy paranoia thrown at them which doesn't tell the whole story uh, of what's happening. So it, it, there, I have very big concerns over those generic prompts for storage access API uh, with no context. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, Mike, you have a question uh, on the chat. Do you want to talk about that question? Sure. Dick was using the term decorated link. Um, and just so everybody's on the same page, I'd be interested in knowing exactly what you mean by that and where OAuth and OpenID Connect are using it and or SAML. Yeah, I was trying to find where Sam GoTo had used that term in his proposal and when I find it in post, but it's essentially a link that has other information that's changing on it, right? So the redirect link in OAuth OpenID Connect is a decorated link. Uh, the you know, ad industry uses decorated links to you know link you know the user in one context to another context, and so that's a privacy issue for them. Yeah, anything with a query string is a technically decorated link, as in uh, it's a URL which is carrying parameters. That's uh, that's it. What about uh, fragment? No, no it's, even, it's even broader than that. It doesn't have to have a query parameter. It just it, it's different on invocation because you don't need to go and have a query parameter to make the URL unique. And so the browsers are looking. It's like, oh, the user's been redirected to this link, but it changes each time just a little bit, and that looks like the the behavior of a tracking site. And so we're going to start to do something to it. Right, or also the heuristic part. Yeah, so like the query string is like for sure yeah, you can do static analysis. Then uh, the changing stuff uh, is when we start uh, being smart. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else has any comments, questions? Um, Dick broke up for me for the last. 30 seconds or something. So it's not just query parameters. What other kind of decorations are possibly being deprecated? Well, just that the, there's analysis. They, they watch a link and they see, hey, it looks like the user's going to something that's sort of the same, but a little different each time, which is a behavior similar to an advertising site. So it doesn't need to be a query parameter. It could just be a different change in the URL somewhere. 
Right. So like the path? Us, yes. Wow. So it's not like we are looking at deprecating it. Is that uh, that is a signal that we use for, for example, classifying someone as a tracker. So it's not like third party cookies that uh, is going uh, away. It's something like uh, if you use a decoration, your domain might receive a special treatment because uh, you might be leaking uh, information between domains, which might be tracking. Right. Well, the information that's that's dropped is the cookie. Right, and so because the decorated link links from where the user's coming from over to the ad site and the ad site gets its cookie so it knows, okay, I know it's this user from my domain and now I can link that to, you know, the decoration from the other domain. And so then the browsers would start to go and drop the cookie when it redirects over, which then, you know, has that issue in a lot of the SSO environments. It's like, oh, it looks like it's a brand new browser every time somebody gets redirected over. I've got no context. I got to run through my full stack as if it's a whole new browser. That's the impact. Right. And that is what Safari has implemented. So as I understand it, if they detect what they call bounce tracking, so if, if the IDP redirects to more than 10 sites in this sort of redirect model, right, then the IDP could get flagged as a bounce tracker. And what Safari will do is rewrite your cook, your same site cookie status from whatever it was to strict, which means it won't, it will no longer flow on a redirect. Um, whether you could redirect to yourself and get it is unknown. And obviously the brow, if the browsers felt like the ad platforms were doing that, then they would go fix that too. So you can, you can look this up in the ITP stuff um, in their blogs where they basically talk about um, same site equals strict jail. Um, and getting it to trigger is tricky. So if anybody has the ubiquitous use case that you know causes Safari to drop into this behavior, I'd love to see that documented. Um, okay, any... Any more comments, questions? Uh, to follow up on that, then the model on iOS is to use the iOS API, you know, to go and start your flow. That's, that's probably what Apple's position is. Uh, maybe it's unclear in that context what what happens for standard OpenID Connect or OAuth flows. Obviously, Apple's going to want to drive people to use sign-in with Apple because that gives them much greater reach and much better for their advertising platform and all those other sorts of things. Um, and I probably shouldn't be quite so blunt on a recorded call. Um, the, but the, um, But I don't think that today there's anything that prohibits standard um, OAuth flows because you should be using universal links, which is part of, you know, unless Apple deprecates universal links, you should be using those, which will reawaken your app, right? And so I, I, I see less impact today on the mobile app experience than on the, you know, desktop and mobile browser experience. Tim, Tim, Tim. Uh, and George, I, but I think, yeah, and I, I will say this on a recorded call, I don't care. Uh, I, I think there is a desire to break browser flows, so you have to download an app. So we should keep that in mind as well. <laughs> we makes money in the well. OS vendors don't make money in the browser. <laughs> that may be, but at the moment, for you know, content or, or for publishers on the web, it's actually more advantageous to them to get their users to download the app because certain the things you can do in the app are quite different than the things you can do um, on the web, right? So it sort of goes both ways. The issue is that users don't want to, right? If I'm, if I'm using Google News on my Android device and I see something interesting in that, you know, minus one swipe left screen and I click it and it takes me to, you know, news.foobar.example, right? I probably do not want to download the foobar.example app 
because I may never go back to read another article from that site. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, so, so since there's, there's no other questions, comments, I, I wanted to uh, go back to Vittorio's comment about short-term versus long-term. Like we know that there is some pain coming soon. So do we want to do something like do the two different activities around one around the short term and then while still kind of going and, and working the, the long term issue is is that reasonable or do we, we do want to do something about that here uh, i don't know how much like unless you are thinking about uh, like uh, writing proposals and then submitting those proposals Mm -hmm. I don't think that we'll have uh, the ability to differentiate, as in uh, we engage with the browser people whenever we can, whenever we have their attention, and uh, we try to steer the conversation toward the things that we want to talk about. And that's kind of like a, how it's been working. And maybe Haver's workshop will change things. And uh, if uh, your comment influences the agenda that Haver is putting together, Great, but otherwise, uh, I don't know how much uh, we can do uh, on our side to actually differentiate between those two. Heather, do you want to talk about the, the workshop a little bit more? Sure, I can do that. Um, I actually have the draft draft agenda in front of me because I've been working on it. Um, do you want so... me to stop chatting? Do you want to share it? No, <laughs> not yet, because I haven't gotten approval for this particular agenda. I'm going to tell you what it is. And yes, it's on the recording, but keep in mind, I, I don't have everybody, uh, everybody's agreement to play the part that I want them to play. Um, so what we're looking at is a, let me back up real quick. I'm being, um, contracted by Google to help them have these conversations because my, my human network is actually a little bit better than theirs when it comes to having conversations. So, so that in mind, um, I'm, what I'm trying to do is a, a two day workshop, May 25 and 26, 10 AM to 1 PM Pacific time. Um, this may be the first of several workshops, it's going to kind of depend on who I can get to show up. It will be held under the auspices of the W3C, uh, WCG and its contributor agreement. And that way we're, we're trying to handle the IPR and whatnot. Um, in the first day, I'm trying to get the major browser vendors to come in and say, okay, what can you please describe your approach? for how, how you think you're handling this. So to get um, someone from Safari to talk about ITP, to get someone from Firefox to talk about EDP, to get someone from Chrome to talk about uh, privacy sandbox, and also possibly um, getting the folks from the Microsoft Edge team, Brave, maybe even Opera, I don't know yet. Um, that actually is enough to fill up just that that first three hours because of course there's also going to be an intro to make sure everybody understands where we are with the problem space um there'll be some pre-reading if you haven't read the uh, uh explainers that sam has put together either on cookies um uh, which i just dropped a link to in the chat and then his other one which is at the top level of that particular repository you know that's that's, that's day one Day two, um, and again, this is this is stuff where I'm still designing this, and I'd like to make sure that uh, Google and others are willing. Is I want to go through several major reference implementations that say, okay, here's how Microsoft Teams uses cookies and where they're anticipating that things are going to break. Um, 
here's how Google sign in because oddly enough, we're breaking some of Google's things too. Here's their you know, implementation and what they anticipate is going to break. Um, I want to get actually a, an academic federation, hopefully like something like in common to be there and talk a little bit about that as well, which will introduce uh, some more SAML components to this, possibly Facebook, possibly a large enterprise. Um, we'll see, we'll see who um, I can get uh, to the table to have that. And then there's gonna be actually a bit of the, the thing that we all love to hate, the having a meeting about how to have a meeting. Yeah. I need to know how to continue this conversation because part of the challenge is, as you all have identified is I have um, several standards development organizations that touch on this. We've got the IETF, we've got the Open ID Foundation, we've got OASIS, we've got the W3C. Uh, we have groups that are very, very interested in privacy, but they happen to not actually have digital identity people usually engaged. So they're coming at it from a very, very focused perspective. Um, we have people who deal with identity federation and that's what they do for a living, you know, and they come at it from another perspective. And then we, I mean, there's so many different groups and they're all having their disparate conversations. I want to know, can, can this be this type of workshop or forum or summit? I liked the summit one. Um, can we keep meeting in with, with these people? Because I'm hoping that will be the right group to get and us cross pollination of discussion to figure out how we can handle the next steps. If it does turn out that this is the right group and that they're willing to continue conversations, then future meetings would uh, involve things like focusing on, uh, I wanna know a lot more about the social IDPs and are they aware, what kind of problems are they gonna have? So, you know, get Facebook in the room, get Twitter in the room, get uh, Microsoft from their LinkedIn platform in the room. Uh, another meeting focusing very much on the RP experience. Have something that's a very SAML specific meeting uh, where that's actually looking at the enterprise um, bilateral use cases. I know Salesforce has thousands, if not tens of thousands of SAML arrangements going on and the academic use cases, which are these, you know, bizarre multilateral every direction uh, interacting in a trusted way with every other direction um, to have a session about that. Uh, there will probably be more as we as we develop more. One thing I have talked to Sam about and part of the reason that we are shifting to say, okay, we have we have this long term vision of what does identity look like over the next 10 years. And that seems to be where his head's been at. And I pointed out to him that Having two conversations at the same time that that long term vision and the, oh, and by the way, things are going to like fundamentally break within the next year is not a good thing to to really confuse people with because they won't necessarily know which conversation they're in the middle of. And uh, if you don't have agreement on that, you're just going to have confusion and resentment. So uh, his explainer, which is at the, at the top of that repository now actually does have a timeline that says, all right, we're going to start with trying to figure out, are there mitigations that could be put in place for third party cookies? Once we've identified those and they start to be implemented, we can start talking about the link decoration challenges, which will be a longer term problem and try and figure out what, what to do with those. And then as we get, things in place to serve that functionality also start talking about. And then since we're now we're like seriously cracking open functionality, what about things like DIDs or other very much more future facing changes in the identity space when it comes to browsers? I know, I know Vittorio, I, yes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Helen. That's that's awesome. Uh, any anybody has any comments, questions, what uh, what Heather just described? I put them all to sleep. Okay, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> 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 no, that, that that was awesome. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, okay, then I guess my, then the. Maybe next step is to wait for that that workshop to happen, <laughs> and then 
and then may, maybe after that give an update to to this work group and and take it from there is that that reasonable I I think as far as IETF that may be fine but I would say please look at the scenarios list that Vittorio you know mentioned at the beginning and grab one and write it up right because at the end of the day we need to be able to point people because you know you listen to the conversations and I think that while you know browsers may under in general the people working on browsers may understand you know uh, signing with Google flow or, or, you know, at a user experience kind of a thing, they don't know the intricacies of identity and what we're doing and all the different use cases and when they occur. And so having something that we can point them to and say, hey, you know, this is, this is a critical capability that is, you know, active today, you know, and ideally if you're using something and you can say, um, you know, and we, you know, we see about this much traffic, right? Especially, you know, like in the major, you know, cloud identity space, right? Here's the amount of traffic we see coming through that adds significant weight into them recognizing, oh, right, we need to go figure out what this means. Okay. Uh, Philip. Um, yeah, just a quick question. Um, the uh, use cases list is there a form or is there a way for us to go dips on one of the one of the use cases so that two people by accident don't work on the same thing I'm there sure are issues know. in the repo like uh, if you go in the repo and you see the list of issues you'll see that the team called the dibs on some of those scenarios you can do the same all right thank you okay um shop. Okay. Um uh, on the workshop uh, Heather will you be able to send a, a notification or an email to the list when that is kind of uh, when you have it uh, defined or yeah yeah um as soon as i figure out the the I'm not normally a secretariat, so trying to get all of these different groups to actually play well with each other and then to figure out um, having it under the, the W3C's auspices makes the most sense in terms of, of uh, where browsers are most likely to be, where I can get the privacy people, et cetera. But I need to understand how how they do their workshops in terms of signups and everything. As soon as I have that, which I hope to have that this week, I will send out a note, a landing page, registration, that kind of thing. Don't yeah. expect and, this is going to cost any money. It's just. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to exactly kind of clarify this. You don't have to be a member of W3C to be able to attend this, right? For a community group, um, you need to be a member of the community group, but that isn't the same thing as being a W3C member. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, could we have three minutes here? Uh, any anybody else has any comments, questions? Okay. Uh, Vittorio, any and, and George, any wrap up comments or are you good here? <laughs> scenarios, scenarios, scenarios. Scenarios, scenarios, scenarios. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Well. Vittorio and George and Heather, thank you very much. That was a great uh, discussion and presentation. And um, let's hope we can make some progress with this. Okay. Thank great. you all. Appreciate thank it. You. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye.